Oh, good morning. How's good everybody? Morning. Good morning. Yeah. Hi. Not a bad day. No. I'll tell you what, that sun was out. Yeah. Be a little challenging. We only have a lot of shade here. Um, so God touches our lives in various ways. Uh, and so I was reading in the Psalms this morning about singing a new song to the Lord, give him great praise. So I'm driving here from Oshkosh. And by the way, I'd like to thank the church and all the people that jumped in and helped my wife and I to move in. Uh, we feel very welcome. We got meals. We had two and a half trucks that we had to unload. Uh, and uh, you guys did a great job. And so we're very grateful and thankful for your efforts. I still have a dolly that I hope I can hand off today to a brother that did a great job of helping us out. But anyway, driving on the way here, there are speed limits. I think we're all aware of that. It's throughout the city and throughout going between Oshkosh and Appleton. So for those of you that travel that route, the speed limit between Oshkosh and Appleton, in case you didn't know, is 65 miles an hour. Okay, so I'm driving this morning and drive by a car that is kind of, you know, it's pulled to the side. It's an SUV, kind of suspicious, huh. and it ends up being a, a police car. Huh. And I look at my uh, speedometer, and I'm doing more than 65, okay? I'm thinking, okay, what's gonna happen here? And the officer, he pulls out, and he starts to follow me. And I'm thinking, oh no, <laughs> this, this is not what I planned for my Sunday, right? I was not looking for this, you know? And so he gets closer and closer and closer. He switches lanes and he pulls over the other guy. So for me, that was the grace of God, right? But for, for the other guy, I don't know if he felt like that was the wrath of God. I don't know how you, how you figure that out, right? It's a blessing for one person and the wrath for the other. But anyway, I felt, definitely felt the, the blessing of God. So uh, anyway, thank you again so much for helping us out. It's great to be here this morning. Uh, I was already asked how long my message would be, so I will try to keep this as concise as possible. Anyway, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that can move our hearts, uh, affect our lives. You know, one of those things, you meet that special someone. And that's a pretty cool moment when you meet that special someone. And it does, it absolutely alters your life as you do things and change your life in ways you never think. Maybe you've worked very hard at an athletic or an academic type of endeavor and you achieve something. That's pretty cool. It definitely moves your heart. But today, what I would like to talk about is that of courage. And when you think about attributes of, of situations and character, probably nothing like courage really draws your attention and in some ways alters lives and even can alter the course of history. Um, this morning, what I'd like to do is take you back about 1,900 years, okay? So we're going to go back to Roman time. So Rome is still in charge. And the culture of Rome, it's not really noted for its morality. No. Okay? Really very kind of decadent. You know, we think times are kind of crazy now with some of our faltering values. Well, it could, it could be said that Rome, uh, they didn't really have, <laughs> they had values. It was directed towards Caesar, right? Yeah. And I think nothing expresses kind of where that culture is at in terms of what they considered their greatest or most enjoyable form of entertainment. And that was a gladiator contest. As was customary in Rome, on such occasions, there were bloody combats where gladiators, armed with swords and spears, fought as furious as if they were on the battlefield. These men, in the prime of their youth and strength, came forward. Some carried swords, other 
three-pronged spears and nets. They march once around the walls of the Colosseum, stopped before the emperor, held out their weapons, and with one vo voice shouted greetings, saying, Ave Caesar Moriatri da Salutat, which meant, Hail Caesar, those to th that are about to die, salute these. Then the combats would begin. The gladiators with nets tied and entangled those who had swords, and when they succeeded, mercilessly stabbed their antagonists with, with a spear. When a gladi gladiator had wounded his adversaries and had him lying helpless at his feet, he looked up at the eager faces of the spectators and would cry out, Hak habe bet, he is done and waited for the pleasure of the audience to see what the fate of this antagonist would be. If the spectators held out their arms and they gave the thumbs up, then the antagonist would be dragged off and hopefully he would recover from his wounds. But if the fatal sign, and I think we've seen this, the thumbs down, was given, the conqueror was to slay his adversary. And if that person showed reluctance to, pre to present his neck, which would be cut off by the death blow, shouts from the gallery would be, recipe for room, which meant receive the steel. Privileged persons among the audience would even come down from the stands onto the grounds to better witness the death and agony of some of these individuals. That was entertainment for the Romans. Many slain, people maddeningly excited about the death of others. One particular event that I want to bring up today and bring to your attention occurred in actually 391 BC. And it was a celebration that Rome was having. They had uh, conquered the Goths. And when they had uh, a great victory, they all came and celebrated for many days in the Colosseums. And then in the Colosseums, they would have the gladiator battles. Among those present in the Colosseum was a hermit monk who vowed himself to a holy life from prayer and self-denial. His name was Tel Ek Moshe, Musha, and had come from the wilds of Asia on a pilgrimage to visit the churches and to complete his pilgrimage into the city of Rome. At the sight of the barbarian cruelty that was taking place, this holy man boldly leapt down into the arena. Wow. He was seen as a man, not necessarily a gladiator, not an opposing presence, but without hesitation, he advanced upon both of the gladiators engaged in combat and held them and turned to the crowd and in a loud voice yelled out, do not repeat God's mercy in turning the swords of your enemies by murdering each other. So for their, a moment, there was silence in the crowd. And then came the Romans crowd's response. And it was, this is no place for preaching. The old customs of Rome must be a zerm on gladiators. And thus, they moved the young monk aside and continued on their battle. Filled with conviction, this holy man jumped in between them again and held them apart and said, no, this is wrong. This is not right by God. This should not be. The crowd 
in their request for seeing a battle, yells out, sedate, sedation, sedation, down with them. And the gladiators, enraged at the interference of their battle, took the young hermit, stabbed him, left him bleeding on the ground, there to die in the Colosseum. If you would, please, open your Bibles to Romans chapter 5. Okay. Okay, we're going to go to verse 18. And it says, consequently, just as a result of one trespass was condemnation for all men, so also the result of one act of righteousness was justification that brings life for all men. One righteous act. When you think about it, isn't that why we're here today? Because of one righteous act? Right. An act by a man who was without sin but saw the depravity of what was around him. And that act was no ordinary act. And as we find, I think, with acts of courage, it changes life right. and can change lives. Have you ever met somebody that is really prideful? <laughs> and they're like blinded by their pride. And you leave that conversation, just shake your head, right? That was me. I was a man that was blinded by his pride. I was fortunate to go to a university and got accepted for a graduate program. And in that program, they were doing some new they were delving into new areas of rehabilitation with cardiac patients. It had been believed that if you had a heart attack, the best thing for you was to rest six to eight weeks and then slowly advance you into your care. Research found that's the exact opposite of what you wanted to do. So I was fortunate to be accepted into that program. And so for two years, you learn all types of things, physiology, EKG, electrophysiology, uh, and you work with those that have had the same ailment. At the end of two years, they have what they call an oral exam. And what that oral exam is, is that the professors that you work with, they sit down, you're at a table, it's you, it's the three of them, or I had three professors, they can ask you any questions they want over what they taught over that two year period of time. And depending on how you did on that oral exam, you either got your degree or you didn't. And I was fortunate because I look back on it, one of the questions I answered, I did not answer correctly, but maybe that's a, another example of God's grace, right? Um, but what was very unique, one of the professors I'd worked with, uh, we had developed somewhat of a friendship. And after the exams was over, we're walking down the hall, he pulls me aside, and he congratulates me, which is pretty cool. And then he, tell, he goes on to tell me, you know, Mark, there's, uh, there's a difference between an acquaintance and a friend, okay? Acquaintance will just say hi and let you be. A real friend, you like have, and he uses to have something hanging from your nose, Right. He'll pull you aside and let you know, hey, right. dude, there's something hanging from your nose. <laughs> That's a real friend. 
He said, what I want to be is I want to be a real friend to you. And what I see in you is a lot of pride. I didn't necessarily really know what he meant then. I hadn't studied the Bible, but I could tell from his tone it wasn't a good thing. <laughs> and the problem is, is that that pride, it leads us to some dark places, which it did in my life. And so I am very grateful and I think we all, if we're very honest with ourselves, has our own stories. Yes. And we were willing to journey there. How the act of one righteous man changes everything. And so my message for today is simple. It's really one of remembrance. Communion can get routine. Coming to church to be routine. But our lives left to ourselves don't get routine. They can get very dark and shadowy. And really, it was. It was the act of one righteous man who changed everything for us. By the way, the hermit Telek uh, Mashas, I think how you pronounce it, his blood on the arena floor that day did not go in vain. After that incident, the emperor at that time, his name was Honorius, set a decree to disband all gladiator competitions after that. There was never a competition again. Uh, that man was able to change the course of history then. Right. And what we're fortunate to have is our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ who saves, who gave us a change for our, all, all of our eternities. Amen? Yeah. With that, what's... Uh, Let's go to prayer.